Dr. Patrick Langeron from the Coral Reef Aquarium.com. Today we're going to talk about applying the aquarium background. There are many different materials that you can use to cover the back glass of your tank. However, each and every one of them have some shortcomings. People like to spray back, spray paint the back of the tank, and uh, although that's very efficient and it does uh, uh, last for quite some time, it's permanent, and you, if you ever decide that you want to move that tank and use both sides of it or switch it around or whatever, you can't because you got all this paint on it and that's going to be difficult to remove. Uh, the old school foil backgrounds uh, that we used to use many years ago will always disfigure over the course of time either due to moisture and heat or a combination of both and they never really stick well. You have to tape them on, uh, they don't look very good at all and certainly I don't think anybody wants to cheapen their reef tank by using some of those other Divadan type uh, you know, backgrounds that we used to have as kids with uh, freshwater fish tanks. So uh, I find that uh, uh, the best background to use is a solid color. I particularly prefer black. I think black is the most contrasting with all the vivid colors of the corals and uh, the, the tropical fish that we're going to put in here. And the material that I choose is uh, contact paper. Now we've all seen contact paper. It's available probably in every hardware store in America. It's very inexpensive. It's uh, black on that side and it's also black on the other side. And um, what we're going to do today is we're going to stick this sticky side to the glass. We're going to apply it and unroll it like it was wallpaper going onto the wall. And uh, to do this efficiently, you're going to need a towel. You're going to need, of course, a cutting knife. And uh, in the beginning, you're going to need a tape measure. When you are measuring this, you want to measure enough and give yourself enough material to work with so that you're not really uh, coming up short. So. Really, measure the, from a, the frame to frame. Don't really try to measure from just the glass surface because when you're applying this, if you go crooked a little bit, you, you're, going to go, you're going to see that in the end product. So later on, we'll trim it. Bear in mind also that if you are trimming it and you have a mistake or whatever, and it's down here in the bottom, more than likely your sand bed is going to conceal that, and so is your rock work. I mean, the reef tanks generally, we're going to go high, but if you're just doing a fish tank or anything like that, this project will work equally well for you there. Um, and the same thing goes uh, for up on top. Uh, this tank happens to have an extra wide frame. It was, like I said, it was built 20 years ago in Brooklyn by a uh, world class aquarium guy, Robert, made this tank, and he was a great tank builder. Uh, the, fa the frame has failed, but the tank is still holding together, which uh, most often today, all your tanks are held together by the frame themselves. So uh, it's a testimony to uh, this guy's good work. But uh, once again, when you get up at top and you have to trim it, most often your water line isn't going to be, except in the case of this tank I think, your water line isn't going to be uh, that, that low, that high that you'll see it, you know, because most frames stop it around here. This happens to have a really, really wide frame. So there are some, some areas for forgiveness. And also if you do make a mistake, uh, you could just put more paper, more contact paper right over that area, and from the front you're never going to see it. Bear in mind that you want a really clean glass. I clean this glass with water first and then I washed it down with alcohol. Alcohol is streak free uh, and it really gets off anything that might be gummy or stuck to it or whatever. If it's a new tank, generally you don't have to worry about much, although some of these tanks have these stickers on there now that are really hard to get off, so that's a little bit to deal with. But in this tank's case, uh, the old contact paper was on there and uh, you know it had salt on both sides and it was just a little bit of a mess, so I took the time to clean it before we did this video. Now. When you're going to work with this material, remember, you're going to apply the sticky side to the glass. And this is always easier when you have a helper because the helper will hold the material uh, as you unroll it. Rather, she'll unroll it as you, as you uh, apply it and slide the way. So there's a couple of pitfalls. Always keep the roll tight. If the roll comes loose as you're doing it, the paper's going to want to go crooked. It's sticky. Uh, if it tears, this is already like a little torn here, it may present a problem, but we'll deal with it as we go along. So, number one, let's get it started, which sometimes is a little tedious. And like I said, you want to expose this whole sticky side. So, peel off enough that you have to work with. You don't want to keep it exposed to the air too, too long. And you certainly want to prevent rips like that from happening, but that happened because the paper was ripped. So let's just deal with that. This is the beauty of live TV. 
And in reality, when you're doing your project at home, it's good that these little things happen because it may happen to you. And you'll see how uh, I dealt with it. We have to do time lapse to get through this part. There we go. I need fingernails, which I don't have. There we go. So get the paper even. Get any tears out of it. Okay. Once this area is exposed like that, this paper wants to be dripping today, see? Take this and apply it. Now, in this tank, we're going to have to do a second application to get uh, the lower half because the paper only comes a certain width. Now, that's okay. But when you do that, slide at the top so that the uh, second application is at the bottom and it'll definitely be concealed. Not that you can really see it, but uh, it'll just look nice if it's solid up at the top. So, this is always easy when it helps, but we're going to make the best of it. So once you got it started, and you've got that first couple of inches stuck on, make sure there's no bubbles. Check your paper that it's not going to go crooked because the paper just wants to fall. If you have a helper, this is going to be a lot easier. And you'll see I'll have probably have a little difficulty because there isn't anybody holding the paper. But it's not that it can't be done. Now, just when you push the air out, hold the paper as straight as possible. We'll have you help the holder as straight as possible. And go slowly and uniformly. And you'll get all of the creases and stuff out. You can't just push the top and then work on the bottom. You know, you can't go like three inches this way and, and not have gone three inches that way on the bottom. You've got to go completely up and down the same amount and apply it so that you're pushing the air out. Otherwise, you're going to get creases. Now, this may take, you know, a few minutes to do, but the paper that I took off of here was really on here for like over 20 years. You know, and when you paint a tank, as I said, it's not only is it permanent, but paint over the course of time does chip and it cracks if it doesn't chip and you see light coming through it, it doesn't look good, you know? So I don't like that. And just so you know, the reason you want this background on your tank, because you want to stop the viewer's eye. You want to stop their eye uh, from looking towards the back because their field of vision is just going to continue. They're just going to look as deep as they can. And um, generally, most of us have wires or plumbing or whatever behind our tank, and it's not going to look very good. Now, this paper may have had a crease in it, too, and that's why it's giving me a little bit of a hard time. But go slowly. Don't lose your patience and get frustrated, and you'll get it on there right and, and this is not very expensive material. So if, if you do it and you don't like it and you want to peel it off, you can peel it right off. It's only going to cost you a few dollars and you'll have experience. <laughs> but you won't have to do it again and again and again. And let's face it, when this tank is up against the wall or in its permanent position, you're not going to have access to the back. So it's a one shot deal. What you put on here is going to stay on the back for the life of the tank. And the other thing, too, that we're going to talk about as you read on in the book is insulating the back, is insulating the tank. And the insulation is definitely going to go on the back of the tank. It should be under the tank, and we're going to put some insulation under this tank later on. And then the sides. Now, we'll talk about insulating it in that little video that we're going to do on that. But just so you know, 
This goes on first, then the insulation goes on, and you can either cover the insulation with contact paper so that it doesn't look like insulation, you know, you can put black on that. It's probably the best thing to do. Or if you're a spray painter and you like spray painting, you can spray paint it, I guess. But whatever works. Make sure you get a little piece on the rag that we don't need. These are all the nice things that happen on live TV. You got one shot, you know? But you see, we're taking our time and it's going nice. You can always re roll. The little crease is going to present a little bit of a problem, but we'll do. Kind of getting the groove on, you know, once you get into the groove here, it goes a little smoother. Now that's the one thing you don't want to have happen. See that paper ripped? That means that that blue paper, rather the white paper here, is not coming off uniformly. And that's a problem. But, I'm glad that happened on TV because now you can see that that's one of the things that could happen. And you just peel it off till you got it. Okay? That might happen to you. But it's not a catastrophe. for my knife and with the knife pointing to the frame perfect now if let's say you you know you went down and you cut an area like this or you ripped the paper or whatever if you were to reattach that like that you'd never notice the difference in the front you could never see it. It's black on black and that's it. And let's not forget, our glass in the back is not going to be pristine. It's going to, eventually you're going to have, um, you know, a coralline algae growing on there and, and snails and worms and all kinds of different things. Plus your rock work is going to be uh, relatively high. So, just put that there in case we need that later. Again, trim this side. Let's get right up to the glass. The glass is your guide. Come straight down. On this side too. You could wrap it if you wanted to, you know. 
Or maybe we'll do that on that side since we have uh, our own stick, right? Let's see. Let me get this stick. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So there you have it. And then we're going to come back and we're going to put that second application on. We have it right here. Uh, just give me a second to take this back off here. Which is sometimes, as I said before, a little bit of an issue. Again, start it, make sure that you start it nice, we're a little too low here, we're going to run into the stand, into the uh, bottom of the tank and stand, so get it started, get your rag. With a smaller piece like this, you could probably get away with it hanging. Again, your knife, make find the bottom of your frame here. Make sure you cut this paper from the tip. You got it. Now you got a black back here. It's going to stop the viewer's eye. They're going to focus on the, all the beautiful critters you got in the tank. It's going to look great and it's going to last. It's going to last forever, man. The other one was on here for 20 years. This is a breeder tank. We're going to put some clownfish in here and get them breeding. So uh, it's going to look really, really cool. You need black all around for breeding fish. They have to have uh, confinement and feel really, really confident that there's no threats from any other side. And they can only see out the front. So here you have it. Doesn't look good from the back because you see all the work, but on the inside, it's just going to be flat. And you'll see that. Uh, we'll turn the tank around. We'll put the lights on it. And uh, you're going to see it in a few minutes on video, but it's going to take us a little bit of time to do it now. And uh, you're going to like it, I'm sure.